Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be testing a low-cost DIY windshield repair kit that I purchased on Amazon. I picked up a pretty bad rock chip on the drive to work yesterday, and I want to reduce the probability that the chip propagates outward into a crack. I previously had a different chip repaired by a professional service, and the professional repair turned out very nicely. We can use this repair as a reference to compare against the DIY repair. I've never tried a DIY windshield repair, so this will be a learning experience for all of us. Let's get started. All right, so the repair kit has arrived, and now we get to see what's in the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And it basically is just this little kit. It's quite a bit smaller than I expected, but I think it has everything we're going to need to complete the task. So we've got our injector syringe for actually applying the resin. We have two bottles of resin. I believe this is the same material in both. I don't believe it's an AB part resin. I think it's light cured. This is the actual applicator. So I think this is what's going to stick to the glass using this suction cup mount. And that's what will be used to apply the resin. And it also comes with a razor blade and a push pin, which I guess are going to be uh, helping us to remove any excess material after we're finished. The all important instructions, I'll be following these as closely as I can. And it comes with some strips of plastic to seal up the repair while it's drying. I've gone ahead and moved the vehicle to a less sunny area. This is important because we want to make sure that the adhesive or resin doesn't cure before we finish the repair. According to the instructions, the first step is going to be to thoroughly clean the windshield with a dry cloth or paper towel to make sure there's no dust or debris present. The next step is going to be applying the suction cups. That's where we're going to inject the resin. So I'm going to go ahead and thread that down, and that's going to help me index it right on top of where the damage has occurred. And now I'm going to go and sink down all of our suction cups. And you really want to make sure you get all the air out of the suction cups, because that's it's important to get good pressure, good uh, attachment force when we press this thing down. So we've attached this, we're going to tighten this down. You can see it's starting to deflect the suction cups up. That should be a good seal. We might need to go a little bit harder, but we don't want so much force that it peels up the suction cups. Now they recommend adding five to eight drops of resin to the resin chamber. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's one drop, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to go for seven. I'll leave it like that. So there should be some resin loaded into there. We're going to check for leaks on the inside of the car to double check. looks okay for now. So what I'm going to do now is take the syringe and I'm going to have it fully depressed to start because we're going to pull a vacuum and I'm going to put it on to the end of the resin chamber. And now I'm going to pull a vacuum and I'll be using the clip to hold the vacuum in place. There. Oh, almost. Yeah, this actually should be enough vacuum. So this is at very low air pressure. This will allow any air inside the crack to slowly vent out. The instructions recommend three to five minutes in the vacuum state, so we're going to allow it to stay for three to five minutes, and then we'll come back and proceed to the next step. If we look closely inside the car, we can actually see air moving through the crack and into the resin under the vacuum force from the syringe. All right, so it's been around four minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and release the vacuum, and I'm going to pull the syringe off of the applicator here. So it was still under considerable vacuum, which is good. You can see that's the air that we pulled out. And what we're going to do is take the syringe off and preload it with air. And then we're going to use the syringe to actually push pressurized air in. And they recommend actually clicking it down onto this upper notch to provide that positive pressure, like so. They recommend going inside the car and checking to see if all the resin is being properly dispensed before proceeding to the next step. So it definitely looks like resin has entered into the crack. You can see that it's more clear. Uh, you can actually see that the little bits of dirt in the crack are standing out much more visibly than they were previously. So the repair is partial. 
but you can see the crack near the top of the applicator has not been filled with resin. What we're going to do is retry this vacuum and push step one more time, which the instructions say is acceptable, and if that crack is still visible, we're going to do a surface treatment using the procedures described for linear cracks rather than for rock chips. So the syringe is still under positive pressure currently. I'm going to release that positive pressure now, and I'm going to remove the syringe from the tank here. Now what I'm going to do is add some additional resin to the tank, and we're going to redo the vacuum and redo the pressurization. So this time I'm going to give it a little bit more than I did last time. Uh, they do give you two bottles of this stuff, so I'm going to give it like eight drops to go. And now we'll go and repeat the vacuuming and pressurization steps. So I'm attaching the syringe, I'm pulling the vacuum, and I'm clipping the syringe in place. I'm going to go and inspect the vacuum from inside the car now. So I've given it some time to vacuum down. I'm now going to repeat the process of positive pressurization. So I'm releasing the vacuum. I'm removing the syringe. I'm filling the syringe with air. And what I'm going to do now is place the syringe back on, pressurize it, and then clip it in place for applying positive pressure as shown. Okay, so I think positive pressure has been on for long enough. We're now going to remove the applicator entirely. So I'm going to release the positive pressure, remove the syringe from the apparatus here, and now I'm going to remove the suction cups, and we'll see what we're left with. Okay, we've dropped quite a bit of excess resin on the windshield here, which I definitely want to get rid of. So let's remove that suction cup, and I'm going to go ahead and wipe that up, because I definitely don't want a giant glob of resin left over. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and use some of that Windex to wipe this up as well, trying not to get anything into the crack because that would definitely compromise the repair. So we'll let this dry. Hopefully it doesn't leave a ton of residue. We can of course use some stronger solvents to remove this later if necessary. And what I am going to do is just put a little bit more resin over these cracks before I put the final uh, plastic piece over it before we go and cure this. So the instructions recommend doing this quite slowly and very carefully, but they recommend simply applying the resin over the crack and allowing it to essentially just soak in. And I'll go ahead and just spread it over those other crack sections. We're going to try and let this soak in. In fact, they even recommend gently pressing from the inside to try to open the crack up a little bit. They do say that carries a risk of, of actually splitting the glass further, but we're going to try a little bit of that just to see if we can pull some of that resin in. So I flexed the glass a little bit to try to pull in some of that resin. I think that's probably as much as we're going to get at this point, so I'm going to try applying the plastic surface sheet. And they say these can simply be pressed on, and they say removing all the air is important. So we're just going to do that. We're going to try and spread, spread this resin out as much as possible. I'd really like to see it get down into that crack, but that may be too much to ask for a crack of this size. It definitely looks very good in the center already. I think this top crack is going to be an issue. I don't think that this kit is quite powerful enough to get resin all the way up into that crack. But that center section, that delamination, looks really good so far. Like, it's basically invisible at this point. So this is the point at which we should take the car out into the sun, and we should allow it to cure in the sun for 5 to 10 minutes. So it's been in the sun for about uh, 10 minutes now, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and peel off this plastic piece, and we'll use the razor blade to clean up any excess resin. I also have some acetone that I can wipe over it just to remove any final residue that might be left over. So I'm just going to take this and start trying to peel it up, and the resin feels dry. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky, so this is good. So that comes right off. You can see there is residue of resin on there. 
But what I'm going to do is just take the razor and just gently clear this whole thing. I don't want to dig into the glass too much. So I'll take one more pass with the razor. But this is looking very good. So I've got the acetone. I'm just going to wipe down this whole area, try to dissolve away any remaining residue. We'll take a closer look at this next. Well, all things considered, I'd say this repair actually went quite well. The delamination completely filled in with resin, most of the smaller cracks filled in with resin, and after letting it sit for a while, even the larger crack near the top looks significantly less noticeable than before. Now, while I don't think this is the best repair you can get, and I'm sure the professional repair would be somewhat better, it's also worth noting that this was my first time trying it, and operator skill level certainly could play a role in a less than ideal outcome for this experiment. I certainly am happy with the result, I think it's likely to make the windshield last longer than it would have without making the repair, and I think this is a viable option if you're looking to extend the longevity of the windshield after a chip, and you're not interested in hiring a professional firm to do the the repair. Looking at it from the inside tells a similar story as well. It's not the most perfect repair, but it is a lot better than it was previously. By comparison to the professional repair, you can see even the professional repair exhibits a similar level of visible cracking. So I'd say all things considered, our DIY repair really isn't far off from what you would get if you actually hired a professional service to do the same job. So let me know in the comments, have you ever used windshield repair kits? How do they work? What do you think? And do you think this repair was a success, a failure, somewhere in the middle? Leave a comment below and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.